Okay. Almost finished with God's book. Uh, this is the third time I've put his book on video. He has me repost them all the time. And the ones that were there from the first, the first time I did it, they got reposted 40 times. And boy, did they start to look bad. I kept waiting for him to say, let's, let's do it again. He'd ask me sometimes if, you want, if I wanted to, and I said, well, sure, but, you know, just anything you tell me to do. Um, and we finally did about two weeks, three weeks ago. But in that time, he had already had me repost those eight to ten times, something like that. And uh, uh, some of them are already showing some wear and tear. So, uh, we began again this week. Might have been Monday or so. Takes forever to upload these. A half hour video. It's why I have all these parts. My memory card will hold until, uh, you know, 10, 12, 14 videos of 30 minutes. But, um, it stops... The camera says I don't have any more memory every 30 minutes. And all I do is just turn it off, turn it back on, and uh, it's ready to go again. That's what all these different parts are for. This is part two of chapter 47. Uh, chapter 47, part one, is already on YouTube. I'm going to pick up uh, with a verse I was in the middle of. But, and this will be kind of a repeat, but this is the way I'm supposed to do it. Now, this book, God's book, was dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. And your rabbis will be surprised to learn that he dictated, commanded, and directed all of the prophets of the book of the prophets they're books. They're respected books. That's 20 right there. And here's what's interesting. When the Spirit of God alights upon Moshiach, that would be me, righteous servant Moshiach, God is in his spirit. And his spirit is an angel. God created an angel, and for that angel's body, it's not human form and wings. It's the Spirit of God. So, chapter 11 could have read the Spirit of God and God lit upon the twig of the shoot of Moshiach, the Anointed One. The, the, the Spirit alighting upon you and entering you, as we see in Ezekiel, um, is the Anointed. It's, it's so I became a man of divine beings, just like every single prophet did, because that's how God talks to a man. It's how He talked to Moses. Spirit lit upon Moses, and it, it, the angel of His presence, the Holy Spirit, the angel that went before them to clear the, uh, to to make sure they got back to the promised land. And of course, God was there because He told Moses, "I'm going to go to Egypt with you, and I'll bring you back." And I'm going to bring you back too. Wherever God is, the angel is. It's the angel of his presence. His presence is his mind. Now God covers the earth and so does the spirit. You can find that in Genesis. First page. But, uh, well, you can find out that his spirit covers the earth. Anyway, and he's in his spirit. But, that's not the, total, the totality of his mind. I mean, I don't know how he's actually constituted, but he has a mind. And that's what enters the temple. Along with the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. Together, they are the Shekinah. In every book, including, uh, you know, Samuel 1, Samuel 2, Kings, Kings 1, Kings 2, uh, the writings. Okay. Now, Ezra and Nehemiah did not write their books. God had somebody else do it. Probably some, one or two of the prophets that he was with. 
you know, they wrote their book, maybe it was a short book, and he said, now I need you to write to Nehemiah or Chronicles 1. The entirety of the book comes from God. And you, that can be verified. And there's videos that do just that, to show you how you can, you can see that has to be true. And, and really the simplest thing is Isaiah could not have put together 53 with, with the multiple purposes that it has. And I've got commentary. i got a commentary that's generic on 53, not trying to say it's Israel, Jesus, or Moshe. I, and I also have them. Uh, I, well, anyway, there's a bunch of Isaiah 53 in the book, but it's 50 chapters. And there's only about five that are specific to Isaiah 53. Lots of knowledge on heaven in my capacity as Elijah. See, there's four, four, six, six unfulfilled uh, prophecies of the Bible in this, this day of the Lord, which you can confirm if you have the knowledge of Isaiah, Jeremiah 31 in particular. Ezekiel, he's the key to understanding Isaiah 53. And uh, Malachi. Because that's where Jeremiah takes you. See the time is coming. The land will bloom again. Ruined cities restored. Jerusalem rebuilt. And I will make a new covenant with you. Well, how did you get the first covenant, Jewish people? Moses. Who are you looking for? A prophet like Moses. How will you know him? God dictates the book to him. As, and I'm sure the Orthodox Jews anyway believe that he dictated the Torah to Moses. I couldn't know the information of this book. No rabbi today or at any time in the history of Judaism knows those things I'm just I'm telling you right now. They don't believe the Spirit of God's a person. For instance, they think there's ten lost tribes. Well, Ezra says the exact opposite. He said the exiles that returned, all 13 tribes, gathered as one man. It's got to be all of the tribes to build the second temple. And God forgave their sins. They became a holy seed and built the second temple. Well, what do I have with me? And in my capacity as Elijah, of course, I can talk to the angel of the Lord that's on the way from Malachi 3 of the, of the covenant you desire. But sin forgiveness. He's doing it again. Why? Need the third temple built in the worst way. And you can watch my videos or read the book. And uh, got a video on every chapter. And uh, and uh, they're, they're fresh again. You can actually see me and my words match my lips. <laughs> uh, but I couldn't know the knowledge of this book any more than Moses could have known uh, uh, the first five books of the Bible, Hebrew Bible, the Torah, much less the 613 laws the Jewish people had derived from those five books from God for the Jewish people. Okay, 47, part 2. This is verse 29. May they be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteous. B, okay, this is Midrash form, break a verse down in parts, and then comment on the parts. Be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteous. Commentary. A heavenly book in which the names of the righteous are inscribed. The erasure of a sinner's name from such a register is equivalent to death. According to the Talmud, it is open on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah itself is also known as the Day of Judgment, on which God opens the books of life and death. 
Now, none of this is in the Hebrew Bible, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, every religion has got the things. But you can't be teaching something like world exaltation. It goes completely against the purpose of the Jewish people. That's to test the world. To see how much they hate them and how long they'll hate them for. See if we can change any minds with the real Moshe, the real Messiah. And a righteous servant of God finally uh, gets it. This sure as heck ain't Jesus. He doesn't fit either one. Sure as heck ain't Jesus. I never say that. He controls my thoughts, my mind. And that's the knowledge of heaven, because in heaven you're not going to have your mind. God becomes the information of your mind on all things Jewish. All things. Hebrew, Bible, talent, food, history, individuals. Because, but, but with me, it, but he's dealing with me right now, being the information of my mind. As though my spirit can no longer read the electrical impulses and chemicals from the different parts of the brain that have different tissues. Yeah, your spirit reads that. Those aren't your thoughts. Those electrical impulses are not your thoughts. You are your spirit. And your soul's the DNA of your spirit. Kind of, you know, are you, are you a main, are you a main person, night person? Loving person, romantic person, that comes from your soul. But it's your spirit, and with spirit, a soul becomes a person, becomes who you are. We're all in our spirit, and so, and God is in his spirit. The eraser, okay. God opens the books of life and death. He says, there is no such thing. It's a fun teaching. Oh, he can speak to me. He can speak through Moses. Moses was his veritable mouthpiece on earth. earth. And I speak to him. He'll point my head at me. He said, today, talk, when you're on video, you talk to me up here. Although he is within me and he fills this room. Oh, his power. It's just like the chords of uh, his power Ezekiel talks about. That he gets bound with. Uh, I don't think of it as ropes. I think it, it just his power envelops me from head to toe. Yeah, <laughs> he can slam me to the ground if he thinks I need it, and he has about ten times. I think. First time it was on grass, but it's been on sand man many times. He busted my chin up, wounded one of the horses of fifty three. Busted my chin open three times. I said, I gotta go to the doctor. Look at this. Look at all this blood. He said, Now, what would that look like if I let you go to a doctor? I'm God. I can heal it up if I want to. You'll be fine. I made sure it wasn't too bad. Cracked my skull. Got a nerve damage up here. And he takes my hand sometime and rubs it just to bother me because it feels real funny. I'm in the fiber refinement, okay? It's where he changes. He takes a furious person like Moses and Ezekiel and myself. And he, and he tempers all your emotions and brings that anger down. Makes you so angry so many times. <laughs> you, you just start losing it. It's just like, I can't get mad anymore. Go ahead, do whatever you're going to do. Say whatever you're going to say. So that I'll be, you know, nobody's born to be a prophet, so I'll be a good prophet. The two days of Rosh, oh, God opens the books of life and death, which are then sealed on Yom Kippur. The two days of Rosh Hashanah usher in the ten days of repentance, also known as the days of awe which culminate in the major fast day of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The scroll of remembrance in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, is not the book of life. And, and this is uh, from Malachi 3, verse 16, I guess. 
In this vein have those who revere the Lord been talking to one another. The Lord has heard and noted it, and a scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revere the Lord and esteem his name. And in the day that I am preparing, that's God speaking, and that's the day of the Lord, to the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possession. I will be tender toward them as a man is tender toward a son who ministers to him. And you shall come to see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between him who has served the Lord and him who has not served him. For lo, that day is at hand, burning like an oven. It's it. <laughs> a scroll of remembrance is about a special place in the heart of God for those who revere the Lord and esteem his name in the day of the Lord that he is preparing. Not a specific 24-hour day, but the days from when Israel returned. That's, he said, That's all it's ever been about. Y'all come back and I'll come back. It's just taking a long. It's, I know it's been 70 years, but the land was desolate for 2,000. And as in Jeremiah, you know, it's supposed to bloom again. And it came to me nine years later when I was born. Didn't reveal himself until I was 50. Orchestrated my life of suffering, pain, <laughs> grievous bodily injuries. Familiar with disease and crushed with disease, but given long life. 22 years ago, I was given one month exposed to death, as it says in verse 12. This is what you're looking for. You're not looking for a Jesus. This man's not perfect. He, he's in there in the first six verses that are in quotes uh, by the witnesses. And the biggest problem, and what's wrong with them when they say he was wounded for our sins, they're not following God's laws, and they feel guilt. So God crushed me with disease, and I offered myself for guilt. But what I'm really offered was to remove their guilt by making them righteous. They're the many, the many made righteous. That's what the story's about. I was as lowly as them. God selected me, and I'm rising like a tree crowned. Not a specific day, but the days of his righteous servant who God sends before him with the angel of the new covenant to clear the way for his return. Clearing the way is being instrumental in having the third temple built. To make the many righteous he, who believe in him and listen to and heed him as the representation of God who speaks and writes God's words as Moses did. God must have followers of his righteous servant, Moshiach, for the day of the Lord. No man alone can clear the way for the Lord. Verse 30. But I am lowly and in pain. This is King David. Oh, <clears throat> but I am, this is what, I think this is before he became king. But I am lowly and in pain. Your help, O oh God, keeps me safe. No commentary. Verse 31. I will extol God's name with song and exalt him with praise. No commentary. That will please the Lord more than oxen, than bulls with horns and hoofs. Please him more than sacrifices. Okay, I don't know if I have any more commentary. Verse 33, the lowly will see and rejoice. You are mindful of God, take heart. You who are mindful of God, take heart. 34, for the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his captives. 35, heaven and earth shall extol him and all that moves in them. Verse 36, for God will deliver Zion 
and rebuild the cities of Judah. They should live there and inherit it. Verse 37. The third temple is not to go on the Temple Mount, period. It's not big enough. It's tainted with Islam. And Jordan controls it. But it has to be on Mount Zion. This is, there's got to be plenty of room somewhere. Preferably in Jerusalem. Now, I don't know how much open land there is, and he needs a big tract. Is what he teaches me, tells me. Final verse, verse 37. The offspring of his servant shall possess it. Those who cherish his name shall dwell there. Okay, next up is chapter 48. The 12 tribes of Israel return to Judah. Actually, it's 13 tribes. Only 12 were allotted lands in the promised land. The Levites, the priestly tribe, well, they also returned. But uh, whatever reason, well, they, weren't, they were allowed to go to all the different tracks, lots of the 12 tribes and supposedly taking care of them while they were there. They didn't have their own separate track. Thank you for watching.